Hey YouTubers and welcome to Bevan's Bricks. I'm Daryl and this video is going to be the finished convention center. Uh, there is still some details I probably will change at a later date, but I wanted to try and cover as much as possible as I could. Uh, I have been feverishly working trying to get this completed and as you can see I have tried to include as much details as possible. Uh, some of the changes I can already point out to you is this door here I do want to change over to a light bluish gray and I'm probably going to tile this in with white tiles at a later date as well what it is is I have physically run out of parts on most things and <laughs> can only do so much something else I want to point out that's really neat is I have these little disconnect switches that turn on and off to turn the air handling units on and off and as you can see I do have another one on this third air conditioning unit here and then I do, I, I, uh, the elevator shaft does come all the way up to the top floor. And I have a little exterior light. And then what I did is I put a small uh, excess stairs or ladder to come up to the top so that the workers can work on the elevator control switches if they, when they malfunction. And then I have a small stairs that comes down in a little walkway over to another pair of disconnects for two small air conditioning units, which is for the Bevins Bricks Towers office area. And since we are discussing the office area, I thought I would open it up real quick. All I did is I put the elevator shaft that comes up into the main room. They have three little desks. They have a coffee pot and a sink. They have computers on their desks. They have a small copy machine over here. And then they have two file cabinets and a radio so they can listen to music. And then in the boardroom, if you will, I have some of the businessmen in here already discussing plans for the convention center. As a matter of fact, I have Lord Business over here, and he is discussing to everybody and telling them how we can make everything awesome. <laughs> thought that would be a cute little touch. And then as you can see, I have a little water bottle and some plants throughout there. Uh, something else I want to touch on is over here, these throw out small air conditioning units, or they're not really small, but uh, these air conditioning units are the units that control the panel rooms. And I even went as far as trying to make it look like they were wired up and ready to go with conduits going to them to supply their power. As you can see, I have walkways throughout the entire complex, and then I also have vents. And I have water shutoff valves for the fire department if they ever have a fire. Here I have a little stairs to get over the main ducts. And then I have a stair or a little pathway that comes over here so you can check one of the access doors on the ducts. Now something I want to point out is I've really tried to make this ceiling as de or <clears throat> roof as detailed as possible on this build. Uh, a lot of this stuff is, believe it or not, is more structural than it is anything. And what I did is I tried to turn the structural reinforcement of the roof into decorative items. So, uh, believe it or not, a lot of the details that you do see, as far as like the duct work and such, is all done for structural support. Whereas the piping and things like that is just a decorative item. Now, kind of panning back a little bit, we can come down to the main front entrance. And what I've had to do due to structural integrity is these windows are now permanently fastened. Uh, what I mean by that, they're, they're not permanent as in glued or anything like that. What it is is they are no longer a removable item. If I absolutely had to access the building, I can slide them off, but it's a little bit difficult. Uh, that's why I'm calling them permanent now. But like I said, if I do need to pull them off, I can. Uh, it's just, it's a very large pain in the rear to do it. Um, and as you can even see over here in the corners, I even added some piping and that is decorative, but at the same time that does serve a purpose. And what that purpose for is to support the overhangs as they were a little bit of a weight and they want to flex and fall down a little bit. And that is what the purpose of that is. Now, something I didn't finish yet, and I'm probably going to focus on more when I get it located. This is going to be a handicapped entrance. And this on the side is another handicapped entrance. And they even have a little push button on the door, so that way it'll open up for them. Uh, there again, this is another item that I'm going to have to work on. And I will be adding some handrails to that at a later date. I want to try and pan up a little bit. I really wanted to put this on my show table. But the problem was, this building's so big, uh, it wouldn't fit on my show table. So 
that's why I'm trying to kind of show it on my build table. And I know the lighting isn't as good as I would have liked it to be, but unfortunately this is about as good as it gets. As you can see down in the back here, coming down underneath, and I will pull the top off so we can see it a little better. Uh, this is the shipping area. Something else I need to add is right in here I want to add a dumpster. That is going to be the area where the semi-trucks pull in and out, and there will be train tracks running in through here as well once it's placed on the table. Now let me go ahead and start by taking off the top floor. And just real quickly, I wanted to show that I do have a, it's a 2x4 brick that overlaps by one stud, and I have a 2x2 brick that overlaps by one stud that actually helps lock that into position when it is on the top of the building. Now coming back over here, you can see the inside of the Bevins Bricks Convention Center. Um, I did put a convent or convenience stand inside here for snacks and such. Uh, I built it on a base plate, and the reason that I built it on a base plate is because if it ends up running out of room in here, I can remove it to make a little more space for build. Another one of the really good details I'm extremely happy about is I have two. These are uh, the old fire hose panels that you would see throughout old buildings. As a matter of fact, if we pan around here, and now I just noticed something, I forgot to put my yellow tiles on that one. Uh, but if you pan around over here, i got another one over there. And then something that you'll see here is I have these beams here coming across. Now, those serve two purposes. One, I wanted something decorative to kind of show like I had lights pointing down to point at all the wonderful builds I'm expecting to display in this building. But the other main thing as it is, is it is giving me structural support uh, as it comes across here to hold the walls together because otherwise this entire area Because this entire floor comes off and this entire floor started to flex a lot every time I would lift it And I couldn't have it flexing because once I get some weight in it with some of these builds This is going to just fall off and pop apart So these are actually helping me like I said not only with decoration But they are also a huge important factor for structural support And then as you can see I do have CAS uh, from Blockhead UK is the first build that I have and she is in display there. Once I receive a few more builds I will be changing the location of that though. And then I have a turnstile as you can see here that takes you in and out or actually this would be the outbound and this turnstile over here is the inbound and I am sorry about the lighting I know it's not the best. Uh, like I said again I can't put it on my <laughs> my good table due to the fact it's so hard to move this and it takes up so much space. In here I have two panel rooms. In this first panel room I am standing there getting ready to announce the opening of the Bevins Bricks Convention Center. And over in this panel room I don't have anybody yet but I was looking at putting some type of charity event in this particular panel room with people coming in to see and listen to what they have to say. Uh, again, I now this really is more decorative than anything but I have the cross beam there and I have some lights attached to the cross beam and then I put some small curtains as you can see at the back side of the curtains over here and then the small lights that I have attached to that as well. And in the back of each room I do have some uh, speakers that are to help announce or to help the people that are on the stage speaking be better heard for the people at the back of the audience. And then another little service cart, I put the popcorn uh, salesperson over here. Again, I am extremely happy with this portion of the build. Uh, I know there isn't a lot of detail on this particular floor, and that is kind of primarily by design, as I expect to get a ton of builds like this one right here. And I didn't want to add too much detail to take away from the effect that I want everybody's build to be able to be seen and showcased. And the reality of it is, if you've ever been to a convention center, you'll realize that generally it's just one large, big, open room with maybe a few posts around it. So it's not like it's usually that much of a decorative item anyway. Now that I'm eyeing the back of the building a little bit, I wanted to touch on this stair or the uh, uh, ladder a little bit more that is taking you back to the penthouse of the elevator shaft. And again, it was just a few little bits and pieces that I kind of threw together to kind of give it a little decorative appeal. Uh, there was nothing really important about that except just to make sure I had access for the minifigs to be able to climb up and access that equipment. Uh, let's pan back a little more and let's go ahead and take this part of the building off now. 
And now that we have the main convention center portion of the building open, you can see where I have all three elevator openings. Uh, this is the main floor where people are going to start walking. And again, the entrance, the turnstile is here, and the exit turnstile was here. Uh, I have to pull that off so you could see a little better, though. And then down in here, this is the warehouse area. Now, what I've done in here is, number one, I added a little chain. And that is so if the door gets stuck, they can open it with the chain. Then I put another fire suppression uh, or fire... Uh, hose box in the wall over here and I have some toolboxes for the maintenance people to be able to service some equipment and then on this back wall here is the distribution panels and they have some little disconnects and piping and whatnot to give it a little added detail to the back of the warehouse area and then once again I think I have shown these in a previous video you can see that I have some shelving in here with various types of boxes and packaging and then I have a little high-low, and yes, the high-low is able to drive in and out of the doors with the packages loaded up on his forks. And then I also have a pile of pallets over here. That's for the freight that they've already unloaded. And then you can kind of see around in there a little bit better. I know I've showed these doors before, but I'm really happy with them, and I think that they just look fantastic, and they work extremely well. Uh, and I think they're a really great touch for any type of building, whether it be a convention center, a factory, just any type of older building. I think those doors really look fabulous. Now, something else I want to touch on is this is the, as you can see here, there's a little door to come up. This is where the people that are making deliveries with their semi-trucks would walk up to the door, and then they would come in here to the shipping and receiving area. Now, in that shipping and receiving area, I've added a whole bunch of little details. I have a little file cabinet in the corner, a little desk, computer, and they just have tons of small boxes and stuff stacked on all these really cool shelves. And then also for the snack food bar, I have a large deep freeze for them to come down and grab random materials, snacks, beverages, uh, to keep the snack food carts in full stock. And since I'm talking about them, I thought it would be easier just to go ahead and pull them out of the shipping and receiving area to get a better look at them. This is the shipping and receiving guard's desk. And I got the two shelves. And again, there is the deep freeze. And then here's a little desk stool for them to sit at as well while they're waiting for the deliveries to come. Uh, I will be making some videos on how to make those shelves, for example, that desk and even this chair at a later date. But I just thought I would kind of showcase them and let you see them a little better as they are extremely detailed and they look fantastic. There, I'm making a valiant attempt at trying to get some better lighting in here. Uh, I know I've already shown this before, but for anybody that hasn't seen any of the prior videos, this is the restroom area, and yes, I did leave the toilets a little dirty. As a matter of fact, you can see that this one's got a little urine left in it, this one's got a little poo, and this one's got a little urine in it also. Uh, and I did that because I've never been to a convention center or a theme park or anything for that matter where there usually isn't a little bit of nastiness in the bathroom. <laughs> so I wanted to touch on a little bit of realism for that. And then again, I'm panning back down to the shipping and receiving area. Now let me go ahead and get some of this building back together so you can get the full view of it. And there she is now back in all her full glory. <laughs> Uh, I'll take one more quick walk around this building. Again, I am extremely happy with it. It's a very large building. There are parts of it that are slightly flimsy, so I will be having to be very cautious when I go to transport this to put on my LEGO City display table. Uh, I Again, I could not be happier with this. And I am really looking forward to all the extremely cool builds I'm going to be receiving from each and every one of you out there in the YouTube LEGO community. And I just want to point out once again, you do not have to be a YouTuber to send me a build. Uh, anybody that is welcome and wants to send me a build to have it be displayed in my convention center, you are more than welcome to send it to me. Uh, I, and I will be happy to show it, display it, and talk about it. I know a lot of people seem to think that you have to be a YouTuber in order to... Uh, be able to display anything in here and no that is not the case i'm i'm not trying to focus on youtube at all what i am looking at is just trying to make it a community project to kind of let a few other people have a little touch on it so they can say that hey my build was part of that too so 
<clears throat> anyway, again, uh, I just really wanted to make this community project, and, I, and I'm really happy with it, and I hope everybody else really enjoys it. Uh, as much as I enjoyed building it, it's been a real pain at times, <laughs> but I finally got it there. Now, mind you, I will be adding details down here. I'll be putting some plants, and I'll be tightening the sidewalk, and same thing with the exterior. But what it is is until that I fully get this placed in its correct location, I wasn't really that worried about all the front exterior details as much as I was about trying to get the building itself fully covered. So... Don't forget to check out my merch shop. I will be putting that a link in that in the description of the video and in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. And as always, I thank you for coming to Bevan's Bricks, and we will see you next time on Bevan's Bricks.